Today we'll be looking at applications of dimensions which uses the principles of dimensional analysis. We know that physics, dimensions, or dimensional analysis can be used to one, derived an equation. We can as well use it to check how correct that equation is. So let's look at this. We know that the periods of a simple pendulum can be calculated using this formula, 2 pi square root of L all over G. We all know this formula in physics. So we can use dimensional analysis to derive this. How do we achieve this? Let's, let me give you a background or remind you what simple harmonic motion is all about. You have this, a simple pendulum attached somewhere here. Then you have the thread, the pendulum bob with the mass M. By the time you displace it, and swing it, it moves, we know. Assuming this is point A, this is point B, this is point O. By the time you displace this, go this way, come back, that's one oscillation. For example, the time it will take this bulb to move from point A to B is half a circle. That's A, B. By the time it come back from B to A is another half a circle. By the time you put it together, have one complete circle, or what we call oscillation. So the time taken for one complete oscillation is what we call period, which this formula can be used to calculate. So I want us to look at how we can derive this. Looking at this, this L is the length of the thread, and M is the pendulum uh, bulb. And you will know that acceleration due to gravity is involved because this is under the influence of gravitational force. So we have G. So this expression, period, is directly proportional to the mass, to the length, and to G. I will have arbitrary indices here, x, y, z. So we don't know what is x, we don't know what is y, we don't know what is z. You know, we have a proportionality constant, but we don't work with it in physics. By the time we introduce an equation, equality sign, we introduce a constant called k, m, X, L, G, Z. So this is what we'll be playing around with. And this is the example here. The period T of a simple pendulum is proportional to the mass M, length L, and acceleration due to gravity G. Taking the constant of proportionality K to pi, to pi, derive the equation relating T, M, L, and G. Know that K is a dimensionless constant. So let's look at it this way. Solution. We write down this. T is equal to K, M, X, L, Y, G, Z. So we know the dimension of this, this is a constant dimension of mass. We know the dimension of uh, length, acceleration due to gravity. So we can say that T is equal to K mx ly. Acceleration due to gravity, we know that acceleration 
is measured in meter per second square. I said earlier that if you want to know the dimension of a quantity, you must either know the formula or the unit. So in this case, m is the length all over t square, which is equal to lt raised to power minus 2. So the dimension of acceleration is lt raised to power minus 2. So we can write this as lt raised to power minus 2 raised to power z. So by the time we expand this, we have t is equal to k m raised to power x, l raised to power y, then z multiplied by l is l z, then z multiplied by t raised to power minus 2 is t raised to power minus 2z. So what do we do next? You know, with the knowledge of indices, we can write this as t equal to k m raised to power x l y plus z. We are familiar with this. And t raised to power minus 2z. So now we have the left hand side of the equation and the right hand side of the equation. So what we need, what we do to the left hand side, we must equally do it to the right hand side. So we take the powers on both sides. Let's start with t. For t, on the left hand side, T is raised to power, this is, raised to, is the same thing as T raised to power 1. So we have T raised to power 1 equal to, on the right hand side, we have T raised to power minus 2z. So this becomes easy. So this implies that 1 is equal to minus 2z. So we can make z the subject of the formula. Or we can write this as 2z is equal to 1. Or that is minus 2z is equal to 1. And z is equal to minus 1 all over 2. We have determined what is z. We are left with x and y. So let's look at for L. For L. On the right hand side, we we'll have L raised to power y plus z. On this, we don't have. So on the left hand side, is 0 equal to L raised to power y plus z raised to power y plus z. So we equate the powers. So it means that z, 0 is equal to y plus z. Is that right? So, already we have determined what is a z to be equal to minus half. So we introduce it here. We can say that 0 is equal to y plus minus half. So this becomes 0 equal to y minus half. So by the time we take this to the other side, we say that y is equal to half. We have already determined what is y. So let's look at for, for m on the right hand side, we have m raised to power x on the left hand side, we don't have anything. So for m, we can now say that 0 because on the left hand side, there's no m equal to m raised to power x. So with this, we can say that x is equal to 0. Now we have determined those uh, parameters that are not known, x, y, z. Therefore, we can say that x is equal to 0, y is equal to half, and z is equal to minus half. z is equal to minus half. 
So it becomes uh, simple. We we'll now come back to this formula and substitute. How do we achieve that? This is the formula T is equal to K MX LY G raised to power Z. Already we have determined this. So we can answer that T is equal to K M raised to power 0 L raised to power y here, and uh, y is half, and g is raised to power z, which becomes this, that is minus half. So in mathematics, anything raised to power 0 is 1. So we can write this as t is equal to k, because this becomes 1, we have L raised to the power half and G raised to the power minus half. So we can express this further as K square root of L, or let's put it this way for clear understanding. L raised to the power half divide by, by the time we take this down, we we'll have G raised to the power half. So which you can write as T is equal to K square root of L all over square root of G. And we can also write this as K is equal to square root of L all over G. So we can now say that therefore, therefore T is equal to K square root of L all over G, which is the formula for calculating the period of a simple harmonic motion. So we can see that using the dimensional analysis and knowledge of dimension, we can derive a formula, we can derive an equation in physics. Thank you.